what was the first time you've even heard about the term wellness in terms of rheumatoid arthritis? Pretty late into my appointments did I start to incorporate, uh, dis- or did we start to incorporate discussions about, um, I guess, wellness with rheumatoid arthritis. Most of my early appointments were really focused on, you know, treatment and, ter- and medications and things like that, mm-hmm. and I kind of uh, lost the, uh, it lost the thought in a way um, to talk about that with my doctor and how it was, imp- you know, how I could improve my stress levels or things like that. Mm-hmm. Was it ever mentioned to you at the beginning or not so much? Not that I really recall. It doesn't okay. mean that my doctor didn't mention right. it to me, but it, at least in terms of what I would take away from those visits, um, sure. that wasn't really something that I felt like I, we spent a ton of time. Sure. There's a lot to deal with when you're first sort of diagnosed, right? right. So there's um, it's an interesting um, time of how we can incorporate these. Um, so, Katie, how, well, how did you first hear about any wellness strategies related to rheumatoid arthritis? I did get introduced into the nutritional aspect from um, one of my doctors pretty early on with a pamphlet um, talking about um, how an anti-inflammatory diet can be helpful. Okay. Um, so that kind of put that idea in my head. Um, Again, it did take some time to kind of really sink in and just become an actual part of my uh, my lifestyle and daily habits. But um, I do remember getting that mentioned to me in the very beginning, but again, still took some time. Sure. So it's really helpful to hear about materials that you might have received, whether it be a pamphlet, whether it be a website that you know that you could go to on your own time is what I'm hearing. Because it's really hard, right, in, in a couple minutes to go through these strategies. So Leslie, could you recall a time that sort of motivated you to actually do something about any of these wellness behaviors, whether it's sleep, stress management, Around the same time, um, you know, I, I was being diagnosed. I was at a point of high stress. I was planning my wedding. I was studying for the bar exam. Oh, wow. um, I, so I kind of combined a lot of major life events into one time frame. And I was feeling uh, that the stress of all of that, coupled with um, managing my disease, was really um, pouring out into other areas of my life. My reactions were um, probably a lot more extreme than they needed to be, that sort of thing. So I, um, I started um, incorporating some meditation and, and some um, more, more mindfulness techniques. And you did this on your own or with the help of the physician? Um, initially, I did receive the same probably pamphlet. That, um, and I started flipping through that later on. And I, um, so I would credit my physician for you know providing me those resources, but also family members um, had kind of suggested certain different types of mindfulness uh, apps and things like that that were available. Um, and I was just curious and I uh, started to pursue some of that. Yeah, that's really great that you were able to take on and, and you know try meditation. I think a lot of people don't even get to that level. So it's really interesting how we can help and empower patients to even look at an app or to even think about meditation as part of, uh, you know, stress management. Um, So I'd love to hear from you how you kind of took any initial steps. Absolutely. Similar to Leslie, I did uh, kind of stacked a couple pretty big life events um, all together at the same time and was feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed. Uh, My stress levels were getting pretty high and um, that's when I started exercising more regularly and joined, joined a program to kind of really get that going in my life as a daily practice. Um, I was looking for just that kind of outlet and stress relief. Great, so you joined something that made you exercise more f- on a more regular basis. I did, yes, exactly. Very helpful to hear, very helpful to hear. So I think in, in, in general what I'm hearing is the motivation to change is when things in your life kind of bubble to the top, right? And so I think we need to probably be more open in communication to know when those levels are so that we can interact and, and I guess, um, empower at, at those moments. So that's really helpful to hear.